Oh God, we give you thanks for today. And as we begin this time together, looking at your word and continuing to think about how to be stewards of what you've given us, we pray that you allow the, word, the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hey, uh, Andrew, where it says pulpit mic, can you turn that one off? That way, hopefully, the little orange button, not orange, green button. Test. Okay, I think, did that? All righty. There we go. Yeah, the ringing's gone. So just wanted to make sure that was taken care of. So... Today is All Saints Sunday, and this is a Sunday that the church has celebrated for, for many, many years. To, to think about, uh, as we heard, the great cloud of witness, those who have gone before, who, who have run their race here on earth, and now they rest with God. And as we celebrate uh, and remember today, you know, my, my heart, it has kind of mixed feelings and emotions because um, every single person that we have listed today are, are people that uh, have been extremely dear to me and I know have been extremely dear to you. I, I think about some of the stories that, that comes to my mind uh, on this day. And, you know, I think about Kathy Giro, who uh, was very fervent in her prayer and very, very faithful as a, a member of our church. And even though she split time between here and, and Maine, uh, I know that when there was a time to pray, Kathy was always there. And, and she was very, very adamant and very, uh, very true in her prayer. Then there's uh, Don Bumpus. I tell you, Don, Don was a character. He was uh, somebody that that always cracked me up. It, it, it never, never changed or never feared that Don could always make me laugh with a good old hearty, hey, Crisco, as he would call me, as he would walk into the sanctuary. And, and his dedication to the life of this church, I believe uh, if you were to go into the bell tower, you would see a picture of Don with one of our former pastors, Clay Womack. And he was the actual building committee chair for the building that's next to us, Wesley Hall. And before they lifted one of the rooftops for the stairwell uh, on top of Wesley Hall, there's a picture of him and Pastor Clay uh, standing on, on that structure and uh, how he gave his uh, life to, uh, to the church. And then Jay McCrone, I tell you, somebody who made me smile all the time. She was, she, she was a character, you know. And with today being daylight savings time, I remember uh, a few years ago, uh, not, for day, not the one in uh, November, but the one in the spring, uh, right towards the end of the uh, 11 o'clock service, here she comes, just walking right in, like, if, you know, just wondering why everybody's early for church. And... She would always have a comment to say, and and she she loved her, she loved her people, and she loved all of us, and I know that we loved her. Then there's Tom Pilly, uh, Wanda's husband, who was always a source of joy for me, and the way that he loved and served this church. He uh, one of the stories that I remember him whenever we uh, hired Wanda on to be our children's coordinator. He was actually serving on our Pastor Paris Relations Committee. And he was so upset that he had to step down from Pastor Paris Relations. He had a couple of years left to serve on there, but because Wanda was going to be on a staff, he couldn't serve. So we, we found other ways for Tom to be in service, and I know that he loves so strong. Uh, there was Margaret Theobald. Uh, she was a uh, just a powerhouse of a young, uh, young, uh, just strong woman who was 95, 96 years old, and she let you know exactly that she was, she was, she was that old, and she 
uh, was always bragging about how she did work and how she did ministry and uh, we would have to chase her up and down the stairs whenever she was helping with jam to make sure that she wouldn't fall and trip and hurt herself but she was always ready to help the children in our church same goes with Hazel Cavanis, who uh, I had the honor and joy to go and talk with her a couple of times and the memories that she had of this church and the way that she loved and served this community. And then Jim Palmer, who uh, served our country so well, but was also beloved in this church, but also uh, loved this church with his service. All of these memories that we have of those who we love that have gone home to be with Jesus are are just the tip of an iceberg, a tip of of who we are and and how they poured into each and every one of us. And I thought, what great stories to think about as we continue in our stewardship series. What, what, what a great reminder that, that we as members of this church not only exist for those who are here in the sanctuary right now, but we exist to reach out and to share God's love and grace beyond these walls, beyond these doors, beyond the, the ability for us to, to do this on our own, but to do this with a community. So as I was thinking about that, I I was struggling between two different scriptures to to talk about our loved ones who passed on. One is a a passage that's from Revelation that talks about the the throne of God and how those who have passed are now standing around the throne of God. And I believe those that we have honored today are those who are standing around the the throne of God right now singing glory and power to, to the one, to the only God. But I also was thinking about this one passage because I think this also helps us as we continue in this theme of of moving forward. Continue in this theme to realize that that God has called us for something greater than what we do here on Sunday mornings. What we do here on Sunday mornings is extremely important. but, But God calls us in the midst of our pain in the midst of our grief, in the midst of all that we are going through for a greater purpose. And I think our scripture for this morning helps us to see this. So our scripture is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. You can follow along on the screen or you can follow along in your Bibles. Hear the word of the Lord. In all this, you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. They have come so that they, the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I start to take a look at scripture for a Sunday morning passage, I always want to look at what happens before and and what happens after a certain particular passage because we can't just take one scripture here or there and, 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 and think that we have it all figured out, but we have to look at the entire context. And this is one of those passages that really we see the importance of looking at what the context of the scripture is all about. And I I mean that because we look at the very beginning at at verse 6, we hear the opening words, in all this you greatly rejoice. So so the very first question that I I asked myself as as I looked at this passage, in all what? In, In what is it that we are rejoicing, especially on this All Saints Sunday? Well, that is answered at the very beginning of this passage or right before this passage in, for in, Joshua, I mean, in James 1, about verse 3 through 6. It talks about the importance of making sure that we are rejoicing in the living hope that we receive from God. We, we rejoice in the living hope that we receive from God. It, it's not something that we are able to manufacture on ourselves. 
It, it's not something that, that we can kind of muster up so, so that we make ourselves feel better for a time. But, but we must understand that we rejoice in the hope that, that God has given us through Jesus Christ. And that's what Peter is trying to, to convey to those that he's writing this letter to, is to remember the acts of what Jesus had done on the cross for them. And through the acts of what Jesus has done on the cross, we then fully live into that so that we can enjoy the goodness and the graciousness that God has given to each and every one of us. I think if we were to think about those who we honor today, that, that they had a hope, that, that they had an understanding of, of, of who God was in their life and the power that, that Jesus gave each and every one of them. And I know as I think about them that they lived within that hope. They, they, they lived within that power and that promise and they knew that, that, that they couldn't make it all happen on themselves by themselves, but they needed the power and love and grace of Jesus Christ in order to take those next steps within their lives. Because, my friends, sometimes those next steps are difficult. And, and, and James continues to talk about this because he says that while we are greatly rejoicing, we know that we have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. We can't get away from that. As much as I would love to say that we can have a life and a world that is free of grief, that is free of sadness, that is free of disappointment, we can't. That, that, that is a part of, of, of who we are and, and what we must overcome, not by our own might, but by what God has done in and through us. Now, I know this is going to be a stretch, so, so I apologize in advance for this stretch, but I just couldn't get it out of my mind when I was thinking about suffering. A and what I had going through my mind is an old movie. When I talk about an old movie, I'm talking about a movie that took place about 1986, 1987. And it was a movie about three movie actors who, who got a letter from a little town in Mexico asking them to come and help save them from, from peril, to save them from somebody who was trying to, to take over. And, and that particular movie, I hate to admit, is, is Three Amigos. And if you're familiar with this movie, Three Amigos, you have Martin Short, uh, Chevy Chase and, and Steve Martin, they, they go down to this town, this village in Mexico, and, and they are ready to take on the infamous, thank you, <laughs> early service couldn't get that for some reason, so thank you, Bob, El Guapo, who, who, was, who was, as they said, not he was infamous. He was more than famous, as they would talk about. And, and, and El Guapo was there, and they, they called the three amigos together to, to shoot, him, shoot him out of town, and they did that for the first time, just great. And, and they ran away, and then they came back with a whole lot more people, and they did the same, the same shtick, talking about how we are not going to die like dogs. We're going we're gonna to fight like lions. And they start riding around. They start jumping around, hooping and hollering, and they pull out a gun and shoot one of them right in the arm. And once they realize that they're shot, they realize, wait a minute, this is real. <laughs> this isn't a movie. This, this isn't just an act. We could actually die here. And they start crying and they start weeping and they're just they're so distraught. They go up to El Guapo and they beg for mercy. And the line that sticks with me was El Guapo saying, so what about this part about dying like dogs? And it was either Steve Martin or Chevy Chase saying, you know, we could avoid that part. That, that would be just great. I think that's what happens when we face suffering in our own life. It's okay. We, we, we can look at, at, at things that are going on in, in the world around us, and we can go, you know, we can take care of that. That's, that's no big deal. That's, that's fine. But, but when it actually 
comes home, when it actually affects us, we look at the sufferings, we go, you know what, if, if I can at all avoid that and just make sure that doesn't happen, then that's what I want. I, I don't want to go through difficulties. I don't want to go through trials. But Scripture reminds us that through these trials, through these difficulties, through these times where, where we struggle, that is where God meets us. And that's where God strengthens us. And that's where God gives us what we need to make it through the next day. And the day after that. And the day after that. Because my friends, I know I've had times in my life, and you've probably had times in your life too, where you feel like it is just a daily battle to get through the grief, to get through the suffering, to get through the pain and the trials in your life. But because of who we are and whose we are, we know that we can then rejoice because Christ is revealed in us. I can't think of a world that I would want to live in if I did not have Christ in my life. I, I can't think of, of trying to go through different things that, that are currently happening or that, that may happen in the future without knowing that Jesus without knowing that Jesus dwells in me. There are many verses that reminds us and tells us about how Christ dwells in us, but the one that I wanted to talk about was from Ephesians chapter three, verse seventeen, that reminds us that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And and Paul says that I pray that you are being rooted and established in love. That, that, that's how we move through the trials in our life. That, that, that's how we move through those difficulties that we have. That's how we, we, we see what we, we may have to endure for a present moment of time, but, but we are able to move further into a, a new understanding of God's love for us is knowing that we are rooted and established in the love of God. And, and that love of God drives us forward. Not so that we, 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 we hold that on to ourselves, but then we are able to let that love and grace help us as we dwell within the world. I, I don't want to be a part of a congregation that just exist for themselves. And I don't think you all do either. You, I don't want to be a part of a congregation that, that just holds God's love and grace to ourselves and, and forgets about the pain and the suffering that is happening around us. Because that's not what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus doesn't call us just to hold on to his love and grace for ourselves, but to dwell within the world. In John chapter 17, Jesus says these words, that my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world so that the world may believe in you. See, we are called to be witnesses. And, and, and this book of golden memories, if, if you were to take a look at, at the pages within this book, you would see story after story after story of people who, who Christ had claimed, who, who they have claimed Christ, and they knew that, that they were safe and secure in the love and grace of Jesus Christ, but that they became a witness so that the world may come and know Jesus through them. But I think of Kathy and Don and Jane and Tom and Margaret and Hazel and Jim. That's what I see. I see a, a brave witness of the faith saying that we're, we're not here just for ourselves, but we are here for the world. Not to become a part of the world, not to allow the world to, to identify who we are, but knowing that we are identified as beloved children of God. And because of God's love for us, we share that love with others. 
That's why this table is so important. This table reminds us of God's love for us. This table reminds us that, that God came to live life as one of us. God came so that he could pay the price for our sin, so that he could be nailed upon the cross as the perfect sacrifice for us, so that we may be set free from the bondage of our own sin. So as, as, as God came through Jesus Christ to give himself up for us, we give ourselves to him as a holy and living sacrifice to share God's love with others and to allow our lives to be changed because Christ changes our lives. My hope and prayer that as we continue to move forward and as we continue to remember those who we love, who, who have gone on, who are written within God's book of life and in this book of golden memories, we move forward in faith knowing that God guides us and leads us to share his love with others. Let us pray. Oh God, as we share in this meal, remind us of the faith of those who have gone before. Remind us how they have left a, a place for us, a, a mark for us a place where we can experience God's love in a new and profound way so that we can then share that love with others. So as we break this bread, as we drink from this cup, give us your love and your grace and your mercy to be one with you and one with each other. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.